As a policy maker uh, for decades, and as a person who exerts influence on policy makers, um, not only in Malaysia, but across the region, what are your personal views on uh, nuclear power? Um, what should we be doing going forward? Um, does it answer uh, three of the four elements that you've uh, raised, um, security, cost, green energy? The fourth is obviously safety. And is it just a question of public acceptance? Or do you feel that more technical requirements need to be met? Well, um, when I was in the cabinet in Malaysia, I'm talking back now to the um, early 80s, we were then um, framing uh, our electricity supply um, uh, strategy. And um, we decided then that uh, nuclear power um, will be put as the very last option in our energy mix. And of course, at that time, you know, Chernobyl and Three Mile Island were relatively recent incidents, and these were fresh in our minds, even at the governmental level. And of course, we were very fortunate. We then saw that we had a lot of gas, and therefore, what is the need for nuclear power? You have all these resources. And I must, I must admit, and I'm one of those at that time who would say, there is no need to look at nuclear option. Now, fast forward many years, and having been involved directly in a utility company in which you need to um, find out what are the options that are available in front of you. You're talking of a power project necessarily require very long planning period. You're talking of, if you're thinking of nuclear, you're thinking of 15 years ahead. You know, you're not talking of now. What are the options available 15 years from now, say, in some countries, uh, not all countries, some countries? And it will begin to be seen then that uh, nuclear option is an option that one cannot totally just ignore. It has to be featured in in the way you're planning for things. And before what has happened in Japan, and on the 11th of March, I think a number of countries were beginning to look at the prospect of going nuclear in a mix. For one very simple, uh, two reasons. One, when this is a big pressure on climate change, a nuclear technology is seen to be very much one of those that can help to address the issue of climate change and global warming. And secondly, are there alternatives that are available in place? There are a lot of talk about renewable energy and green energy. And it is good that these are now attracting a lot of attention worldwide. But for those in the utility companies who are involved in practical planning, they cannot afford not to be sure whether this can be done or cannot be done. And the prospect of extensive new, uh, renewable energy to be able to meet your base electricity load, base load electricity is still very much in doubt. It will be very costly. You install a renewable energy system. You need to have duplicate system as well because it's not dependable. So when you look at this, then sure, prior to March 11, nuclear should be in your planning program. And the safety features has uh, been improved. Uh, you're now not talking of uh, uh, th reactor design of 40 years ago. You're talking of modern reactor design where increasing safety features are embedded into it. Experience Chernobyl have done that. And I'm sure experience in Japan now would have increased the element of regulatory safety and so on. So reading from what's happening in, in terms of the basic technology in nuclear, it seems to me that it is really not a question of technical issues. 
is basically a question of public perception. And that's, of course, a very important element. And it is difficult to see how public opinion can now be uh, persuaded to support nuclear power, at least in the next year, two years, until what's happening in Fukushima has been a little bit in the background of our mind. So the net effect is whatever plan you have will need to be adjusted backwards. Whether you can do that then, you need to see it. But I don't think one necessarily need to completely forget about it. You still have to keep it as part of your long-term overall planning.